Hello, hello! Today I have my round powder brushes to share with you and I surprisingly don't have as many squirrels as I thought I did so I'm going to start with the squirrel brushes instead of doing the goat ones like I usually do. So I only have six of them and I'm going to start off with these two because they're most similar category wise. So this is the Surat powder brush or artistic powder brush. And this is the Chico Hodo Z1 powder brush. So they look quite similar. They're both this domed shape. And then of course, they're all the round brushes. Uh, they do feel quite different though. So this one's quite resilient, surprisingly firm and springy. And then this one is much more flexible. So you can see that spread, how much more easily it does so. And then you can see the spread here, how it's a little bit more reluctant to um, kind of spread out when I press with it. So as far as these brushes go, I don't need two round, big round squirrel brushes. And I do prefer the feel of the Z1 better for that flexibility, just better for buffing on powder for me personally. So I am going to be de-stashing the Surat powder brush. It's a very nice brush. It's just not for me because if I wanted a soft, dense brush, I would reach for the Saibi Koho goat brush instead. So it's a matter of, I have a kind of dupe somewhere else. This is also very soft, very silky, just like squirrel, but it's even more firm. So this is kind of like too close. And then this is like from hard to medium soft. So that's why I'll be de-stashing this run. Next up, I have what I consider to be my wispy powder brushes. So what we have here are two BP009s, or um, they're meant to be BP009s. They're OEM, probably sample brushes that were made for some company, but didn't get sold to the company. So then they were sold through CG Japan as OEM brushes, but the heads and the are the exact same as the uh, BP009 from the now discontinued, mostly discontinued BP009 series. So I'm going to be selling both of these because I was kind of insane and I bought five of these when they were released because they were a fantastic deal for squirrel brushes. So that's the only reason I'm selling these two. Otherwise, I do love these brushes. And I just want to give other people a chance to enjoy um squirrel powder brushes so yeah um and when it comes to these two this is a tanzedo gray squirrel this is the sc20 it's technically a cheek brush it did show up in my cheek brush video but for me this is more of a powder brush this is like a small powder finishing brush for like kind of like buffing on finishing powder or mattifying powder especially after i've put on sunscreen and my face is a little bit glossy this one's good for um, swirling in a pan of powder and then um, patting it on, swirling it on to make my face not shiny. The only, I guess, sort of problem is it's a, you can see how flexible it is. So it only picks up certain powders. For example, my Decor uh, Marcel Wanders powder picks up that beautifully because it's more like a loose press. The Guerlain Meteorites are a hard press powder and it has difficulty picking that one up. I have to like really, really swirl it in the pan. Uh, as far as baked formulas go, the Clinique Cheek Pops, this one has difficulty with the Cheek Pops, but it picks up the Hourglass Baked uh, Ambient Blushes beautifully. So it really depends, but it's just a very flexible brush. Quite large for a squirrel cheek brush, and it just covers really beautifully and blends really nicely, but I don't need it because I have this brush to cover for it. This is the Tanseido AC20. And then as far as flexibility goes, or flexibility goes, it's even more flexible. This again is technically a cheek brush. It's a humongous cheek brush, but I that's why I use it as a face brush. So this will be my loose squirrel powder brush going forward because I will be de-stashing the SC20. And I can't get my camera to focus for some reason. Yeah, so. It might seem surprising that I'm de-stashing so many, but I do just prefer powder uh, brushes when it comes to goat shapes. Next up are going to be my, I only have a couple 
flat top brushes. This is the Bunchindo. Um, I'm actually not sure what this model is. It's the Mix Kolinsky and Psycho Ho Go Hair. This one's not going anywhere, clearly. And then this is my Hakuhodo uh, J4001. So the J4001, I did mention in my foundation video. And it was in the foundation video because people have used it for foundation before. But as I mentioned in there, unless you're doing a very specific type of like airbrush makeup, this is not an everyday brush because after you use it once, it will clump and it will be annoying to wash every single time. For me, this is much better as a finishing powder brush. So again, um, to mattify my face, swirl it in the powder and then brush it over. This will apply a very beautiful sheer layer of powder. This one is almost a cheek brush, but because of that flat top, it does have quite a bit more um, give and surface area coverage. So I do, again, use this as a mattifying powder brush. And this one is supremely soft. Like I would not have guessed there was Kolinsky here. And after talking to Cecilia Lamb on Instagram, I think I might splurge for the full Kolinsky version because according to her, somehow the full Kolinsky version is even softer than the Kolinsky mix of goat version. So I am super intrigued now. Now my decision comes down to if I'm going to get the full trio set or just a face brush. <laughs> and then you can see the size of this. So this one was wash and dry default brush guard. Otherwise it would be smaller around like this size, actually around like this size. And um, it's one of those brushes that's really flexible depending on if you dry in a guard or not. So. I do like both of these brushes. I am destashing the smaller version of this brush because I don't use that one often. I do use this one fairly regularly. All right, now we have what I consider to be sort of like the dense, actually, no, let's do the flat top brushes first. So this is the Koyudo Flat Top Kabuki. There's no name code for it that I can find. Uh, this is, some kind of baby goat chest hair, supremely soft. I love this. It's a great just buffer face massager, not getting rid of this. It's just super soft. It's not super dense, as you can see from the squeezeabil squeezeability of it. It's just really pleasant and really nice. And then it's great for buffing on um, bronzer powder or just like taking a finishing step and then like kind of blending things down my neck over my body if I'm doing a big surface area. I don't use it often but when I do I really enjoy it so it's not going anywhere. This is the Hakuhodo Powder Round G543. This one is a great replacement for the Tarte uh, Air Boogie which is a brush I absolutely loved until it fell apart. That was a foundation brush. This one I got mostly out of nostalgia for that Tarte Air Buki, and also because uh, Gaia Fisher of the Non Blonde recommended it so highly. But I don't really use it anymore, so I think I'm ready to part with it. it I really only used it a couple times, but then sort of quickly decided uh, doing foundation with this type of really dense, packed goat hair brush wasn't for me anymore. As you know, my favorite brush is the Kabu um, not Kabuki. My favorite brush for foundation is the Fupa 01, which is now discontinued, but is pretty closely duped in the Hokodo BZ1. Both of those are my foundation videos if you wanna see more about them. And I also have a cream foundation video on them. This brush excels at mineral powder foundation, whether it's pressed or loose. And then uh, liquid foundation, it doesn't do so well with unless you like spread it out and then go in and blend it out. Cream foundation, it works really well for because it's so strong and so good at blending. I just don't use it anymore because I don't need as full coverage anymore. So this will be going. Next are two pretty special brushes. So this is the original white mushroom that Sonia G made so famous in her blog. This one has a special handle on it, the Wajima Lacquer, and it's a great powder brush. It's relatively dense, not overly so, but enough to feel nice and plush. Special brush for sure that I use a lot for just all over buffing and bronzing. Super nice. I don't really use it for setting because it's a little too big for that. 
This one is the Hachiko uh, powder brush Kabuki from Beautylish. And this one is special. The hair quality isn't quite up to par with the white mushroom, but I can overlook it because I don't have any other brushes with a ceramic handle. And it is still very pleasant. It's still very nice to use. So that's why I will be keeping it and using it. It's just not, for those who are definitely wondering, it's just not quite as soft as the white mushroom. So there's that. And then in the same vein, we have these powder brushes here. So this white mushroom is denser than the 104. I don't know if you can see the difference in spread. Like you can see there's a bit more of a hump here. So that shows that it's more firm. This one, it spreads out more, but there's still a little bit of a hump. So it's quite resilient. Uh, this is the Shosholong M08. And this was quite close in density to the white mushroom. It's just a shorter version of it. And the hair is quite nice. I would say it's solidly Sokoho grade. I am destashing this, but this one has been spoken for as has the 104. I'm destashing both of these brushes because they're covered pretty well by the Wajima brush, as well as some other brushes I'm going to be talking about in a second. So in order of descending um, firmness, we have this, this, and then we have the Shoshilang M08, the Hakuhodo 104, and then the Koyudo BP006. So firmness-wise at the ferrule, this one, as you can see, squeezes a lot more. So not only is it uh, less densely packed, it's also longer. So this is a very flexible brush. It's almost like the goat version of the 009. Well, longer, obviously, but that flex is very similar. So then this one's a good one for um, swirling in sort of loose powder and then dusting. Like it's a really good duster brush. My problem with this one is that it's so big, it gets outside the pan and like gets the rim all dirty. So I don't really reach for that this brush simply because of that. And it's a nice powder brush. I just don't use it as often as I think I should. So that's why I'm going to be destashing this one. And if you think I'm being pretty brutal with this particular video de stash, it's because I have these two brushes that I just love so much. I reach for these two so much. There's kind of no reason for me to keep the rest. So let's talk about this. Well, we I've already talked about these brushes a lot. This is my go to recommendation if there's a round powder brush that you're looking for. This is the Koyomo or Subokawa Mohitsu powder brush in the Nadeshiko handle, Nadeshiko pink pearl handle. It has Koyomo, aka ancient goat hair. Um, this is Haku Ototsuho grade. I've really said enough about this. It's such a beautiful brush. And then it's better than the 104 for me. They're definitely different. The 104 definitely does have more hair. It's plusher. But as far as application goes, there's something about this one that I enjoy more. It does apply powder more sheerly and it's more layerable if I'm doing bronzer with it. And I like that ability to build up. Yes, it does take more time, but that's the way I prefer to do it. This is the more efficient and quick brush. This is more um, I guess precise and controllable brush and I'm a bit of a control freak and then slightly softer and more flexible is or not slightly noticeably softer and more flexible is the Saikoho Koyomo in the Suki handle Suki is a completely straight and smooth one they have a Yuki handle that's slightly more expensive with grooves in it this one I wouldn't say everybody needs to have it but if you're interested it's definitely um worth getting because uh, this Koyomo Saikoho is the closest that you can get to Saibi Koho in a line that's permanently available. And one thing about this that does bug me is like it picks up fingerprints like no tomorrow. So I'm constantly polishing it after I use it. So these two are probably my favorite round powder brushes of the entire video that I'm going to show you. <laughs> well, this one now quite competes. Are we, are we seeing a trend here? It's all, it's all the old hair. So because of these two, 
and this one. That's why I can bear to part with these three. Next up, we have some more powder brushes. These are more round. Um, this is the Hakuhodo 103. Technically a blush brush, really big for a blush brush. You can use it for blush if you just use this part of the tip and like are really uh, gentle with it. Otherwise, it's a powder brush that because of that point, it's great for like slotting in in that inner corner between the nose and the eye. It's just a really great target powder brush and I really like to use it as like a more sculpting brush. So I'll take it with like a very nudie colored blush and then use that kind of just underneath the cheekbone slightly onto the apple, kind of sculpt out my cheek with it and then uh, kind of brush it off a bit on a microfiber cloth, pick up another like pinker color and then just pop that on the apples of my cheeks and it's really beautiful. The 103, I had two of these previously and I'm down to one because I sold the other one because I decided it was crazy to have two. These are slightly tapered, slightly pointed powder brushes, the Shosho Long. Um, I think this, yeah, this is the M01 from the Freesia line, just like just like this one. I'm pretty sure they don't sell this line anymore. And again, with the other one, uh, I would say these are solidly Sokoho. And if you can find them, they're really quite nice to have and have weighty handles. Um, I do use this one for powder quite a bit. So I'm keeping one and then selling the other. And they're surprisingly consistent for Chinese brushes, but these are also several years old. This one is a dense kabuki brush. This is Saibi Koho. I would say the Saibi Koho on this one, this is a recent release from 2020, isn't quite um, as silky and as soft as my Yakusuji Saibi Koho blush brush, but it is still noticeably softer and um, still, still something to be experienced. If you're a brush collector and you want to experience Saibi Koho, I would say this is worth getting. Uh, Compared to this Koyomo Saibi Koho, it does feel softer and silkier, but because there's so much hair packed in there, it does feel firm and quite resilient. Moving on to my other sort of round firm brushes, we have the Sowa Story, uh, my Fua Fua, the uh, Koyudo Fua Fua, Koyudo Mizume Zakura Cherry Birch, Psychoho face brush. Yeah, that's a mouthful. My Sonia G master face and this Hakuhodo blush brush from the 2018 Autumn Smoky set. So we're gonna put these three aside for now. These are both made of Psychoho. One's just slightly bigger than the other. Fua Fua is going nowhere. This is one of my original Fude, one of the originals to my collection. And then this is one of the handles that impressed a friend he had no idea about brushes. I handed to him this and he was like, wow, that is a work of art. Unfortunately, it's discontinued now. And then this is how they compare in size to the white mushroom. So the Fua Fua is smaller than the Sowa story. And the Sowa story is smaller than the Wajima, uh, than the white mushroom. I'll be keeping both of these because the hair is super soft on this and I don't feel bad about having redundancy in when it comes to these sort of like short kabuki brushes with a wide head. So even though they're pretty similar, I do like both of these. The size difference is pretty negligible for me because once they get to a certain bigness, I don't really lose, I don't really lose sleep over how unprecise they are. Next up is the let me let me get this straight. Mizume Zakura Cherry Birch Side Coho Face Brush. So this one was touted everywhere as a dupe for the Koyudo Fua Fua. In my opinion, that is entirely untrue. You can see by the head shape, this one has a slightly flattened dome, and then this one is much more rounded of a dome. Density wise, I would say they're pretty similar. I would actually say the Mizume Sakura is a touch more, um, I mean, touch, sorry, touch, yeah. 
it's a touch less dense and the four of four is a touch more dense but the main thing is it comes down to they're just built differently because if we look at how wide the hairs are at the base this one is a 26 and then this one is like a 24 yeah, so this is 26 versus 24. They have, So they have different feral sizes, feral builds to begin with. They're similar, but I wouldn't say they're dupes for each other. I would say actually the Soa is a much closer dupe for the Fua Fua, even though it's bigger. So debunked. And because I have these two to cover for each other, I am going to be destashing this one. So let's... Actually, I'm going to bring it back. So let's compare that to the Sonia G Masterface. So these are much, um, so these are sort of sim similar looking with that domed head, that more domed head compared to this sort of flattened domed head. And they look really similar and they feel really similar to me in terms of softness, even though this one has dyed hair plus undyed hair. I would actually say that the Sonia G face hair feels silkier and it does feel more flexible and more soft so surprise surprise the dyed goat hair is softer than the um completely undyed goat hair brush i uh, i am destashing the master face because i don't reach for it that much so if you've seen both my sky face series the master brush always kind of just like comes in last in my ranking i know a lot of people don't agree but that's just my personal preference and size wise here's how it compares to the fua fua so if you're looking for a fua fua replacement um the so is out because it's discontinued so i would actually say the closest feeling to the fua fua that's permanently available is the sonia g master face and then just for fun, because I already have this pulled out, let's see. So this one's even smaller at 20, at 20 um, millimeters across, 24, 26, I believe. Yeah. But feeling wise, you can see the flex. And then you can see the flex. And then you can see the flex. But these two are more similar than these two. And then lastly, this is the reason why I'm saying goodbye to the master face is because I have the Hakuhodo. This is a two, uh, 2018 autumn smoky set. It seems like I like to collect the autumn sets. <laughs> Apparently they're the most beautiful to me. So this is a mixture of goat and squirrel hair and it's just supremely soft. This is the only... Uh, round brush I have that's mixed goat and squirrel and I do really find it impressive this is supposed to be a blush brush but as you can see it's pretty much a small powder brush and then to me these two are kind of redundant except for this one is a touch softer and a touch more flexible so I do prefer this to this one which is why I will be destashing this one and keeping this one so that wraps up my round powder brush video. I'll answer questions and then hop off and do a get ready with me and then go to work. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in while you could. I hope uh, you find the replay informative. All my D-Stash brushes are being sold via a Google Doc. Uh, if you look in the description of my video, you can find the link to that. And then there's a link in the document with instructions on how to buy. Oh, GDZ already answered you. <laughs> the red handled flat top is a beauty. Oh my God, it is so beautiful. So it kind of has these red shimmer, golden shimmers in the red lacquer. Um, it looks a lot more orange on camera than it actually is because of those gold shimmers reflecting light. Otherwise, it's like this sort of like crimson color that's beautiful. And then buffalo horn on the end cap and the ferrule. And then this line here is just from where the hair bundle terminates. Or maybe that's where they wrapped the string around the hair bundle. That might be what that line comes from, but that's not from the horn. 
yeah, the stashing Sonia G, there might be a riot. <laughs> That's also why I tend not to buy brushes in sets because I know there's going to be one that I don't love. I got the Sky set when it was still a set and not sold completely um, or not sold a la carte. So I did struggle with whether or not I was going to destash this one or not. But then I ultimately decided I have enough other brushes that are redundant for it or cover um, the other side of the aisle for it. So... This one's sort of like an in-between and it's going. It's also a style of how I do makeup. So if you know how I like to do my eye makeup, I like to have a very large eye brush and a very small eye brush rather than just use medium brushes all throughout like most people. So it might be a personality thing for me. Okay. Yes, I am going to be de-stashing eye brushes and um, well, I haven't quite figured out how to categorize my eye, brush, eye, my eye brushes yet. So I need to figure out how I'm going to categorize them and then I'll kind of make a video on them and then de-stash them or I need to categorize them to be able to know how I put them on my list. So if you like notice how I do my videos, they're very systematic, grouped by like certain brushes that would be either dupes for each other or close dupes for each other or in the same family. You're welcome. I'm glad you found, I'm glad you like the comparison between the Fuwa Fuwa and the Koyudo and the Master Face. Like, I, I am really impressed by Sonia G's <clears throat> dyed goat hair in general. So if you like have any qualms about getting the Master Face whatsoever, I would definitely get it. I think her, was it, the face buffer is completely dyed goat hair. I don't have that one, but I have no doubt that it would be a magnificent brush if you want a sort of flat top brush for buffing your face and you don't want to spend 500 bucks on 40 year old Kolinsky and Psycho All right, thank you for watching. I'll be back hopefully very shortly with my get ready with me and then that will be all for today. Hope you found this helpful.